السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> Apologies, the connection was slightly weak but uh, inshallah we will get started um, very soon inshallah in the next um, alhamdulillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قل الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بسم الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي صدق الله العظيم My dear respected brothers my hafiz assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh MashaAllah you have been listening to some amazing advices uh, from Qari Ziyad from Mufti Muhammad Wasim Khan and Mufti Ziyad Rawat and inshallah hopefully um, inshallah myself I, uh, I will be inshallah uh, giving some advices uh, in relation to his tips and the Quran recitation. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention before we start is a very important hadith in which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes mention Everything we do in our lives, everything we do in our lives, whether it's um, to do with deen, whether it's to do with uh, this world, whether it's to do with um, any aspect of life, generally, in general, as Muslims, we need to understand every single intention needs to be sincere we need to be clear so when we are standing on the musalla for salat taraweeh we need to have a clean heart and we need to be very 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 sincere we are leading taraweeh for allah's sake only we are not leading taraweeh for gain of pleasure of money or financial reward or any other type of worldly gain wallahi it is very sad that nowadays we hear of stories of hafad who decline Taraweeh invitations because the, the, the monetary value or the, the value in terms of money is not high enough um, or, or any other reason. Now, it may be legitimate reasons, for example, some Hufad, they only lead Taraweeh prayers and that may be the only source of income in the sense that whatever hadiah they get from the Taraweeh prayers, it's enough for them to survive on. But that's another issue altogether. My main focus for the first part is tip number one, intention. Ultimate reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine on a day, on Yawm al-Qiyamah, you will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding Taraweeh, regarding your Qur'an. And if your intention is not sahih, it is not clear, then you will be at a loss. And it will be equally embarrassing. And imagine the whole life a person has read Salah, has recited Qur'an, let Taraweeh year after year after year. But because the intention was sin in, not sincere, then it will go all to waste. So we need to correct our intention. Number two, tip number two is cleanliness. Now, Mufti Ziyad mentioned this already in his fiqh of salah. Um, cleanliness is the most important aspect of deen. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to always emphasize cleanliness. And he was the best of all examples. Okay? He was the best of all examples. Okay? And he was khayrul anbiya, the best of all prophets. And one thing I want to make mention is, if the imam is not clean, then what will become of the salah for the musallis? The, the people behind the Imam. That is very important to understand. Because if the Imam is unclean, then what will become of that Salah? That Salah will become invalid. It will become, you know, uh, inadmissible in the court of Allah. So we need to be very, very, very clear regarding cleanliness. Remaining in a clean state is always essential. Now, as Mufti Ziyad mentioned, two types of cleanliness. Cleanliness of the clothes and cleanliness of the place in which you are leading the Salah to Taraweeh. For example, 
if you are leading Tarawih prayers and you know that the, the floor or the musalla in which you are praying is doubtful whether it's clean or not, then one should clarify or maybe get something clean. I'll give you an example. Once I remember there was um, Tarawih prayers going on in a masjid local to me in London and the Imam was praying Salah and prior to Salah taking place there was obviously Iftar which was being served within the local uh, masjid within the main prayer hall and there were crumbs of food um, on the Musalla. So this then made the actual part of the Musalla was covered in curry etc and you know it was quite the smell was quite you know strong so to speak so obviously then the imam's clothes becomes uh, you know uh, unclean and you know this just creates a very difficult atmosphere and the ment- mental state of the imam is very important as well generally cleanliness is very very essential we make wudu we have ghusl and we are one of the cleanest you know uh, in terms of religion uh, cleanliness is emphasized so many times in the Quran and in the Hadith as well. So cleanliness is very important. Thirdly, tip number three, practice makes perfect. Now I'm going to move more on to the hifz now, the, the preparation for the hifz. Many Hufad, Qari Ziyad mentioned this at the beginning. Uh, if you were listening at the beginning, Qari Ziyad mentioned it is incorrect and inadvisable for Hufad to only memorize the Quran when Taraweeh comes about. For example, the whole year you have not read Quran. You have not picked up the Mus'haf, you have not read your Juz, and you have not perfected your Qur'an. How can you expect your Qur'an to be perfect just by chance? You know, subhanAllah, some people are fortunate. Allah has given them that ability to memorize to such an extent, they don't even, even if they didn't pray the Qur'an for the whole year, come time for Taraweeh or the time for uh, Ramadan, the Qur'an is perfect. But, you know, this is, um, you know, something that we need to understand, that we need to take this very seriously. My dear brothers, when I was doing my hifs, I remember in London, my ustad used to always say to me um, frequently that when you are become a hafiz, when you are becoming a hafiz, this is the most easiest part. So when you are memorizing the Quran, this is easy. But when you finish the Quran by heart, this becomes very difficult because it is your responsibility for the rest of your life. Every single day, it is a haq. Hukukul Quran. It is a hug for you as a hafiz to read the Quran every single day. Whether it's one page, whether it's one juz or one quarter, subhanAllah, it is your responsibility to uphold your hifz, what you have memorized. Remember, the word hifz is not just memorization, it also means to preserve. So to preserve the Quran in your heart, you need to read and you need to rekindle that love by reciting every single day. So it's very important we establish a daily routine. I would suggest start by, you know, maybe doing a couple of pages if you're not quite frequent in terms of your hifz. And when it comes to Ramadan, you will then notice that your recitation will increase as you go along. The recommended amount for the Hufaz to revise is one to three juz daily. So Hufaz are actually encouraged to memorize the Quran uh, and, and read the Quran by heart at least one to three juz. Ulama say minimum three juz, but obviously it's difficult for Hufaz who work during the day and they don't find the time to read three juz. Ideally and essentially, we should be reading minimum one juz every day by heart, every single day. So the Hufaz should make a habit of, you know, um, reading the Quran by heart every single day, at least minimum of one juz. And the more consistent we keep the Quran, um, the more, inshallah, our Quran will be. So it's, it's, li- it's literally up to us how much effort we put in daily. The key is consistency. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those deeds, even if those deeds are very small, but they are done consistently on a daily basis. Wallahi, they are loved by Allah more than those deeds which are done. For example, you read the Quran on Monday, then you read the Quran on Thursday, then you read the Quran on Friday, and you miss the Quran for a whole week, then you come back to it a week later. This is not good. My dear Hufad, my dear Hufad, read the Quran every single day. Love the Quran. This Quran needs to be the muhabba of your life. Your, your whole life should evolve around the muhabba of the Quran. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is read the Quran. Before you go to sleep at night, you need to read the Quran. It's very important. Tip number four is understanding the Quran. SubhanAllah, many of us don't speak Arabic as our first language and we find it difficult to understand the Qur'an. So when we read the Qur'an, we need to understand. Allah says in the Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا 
Allah has made the Quran easy for us to remember and Allah says in the Quran who is there to ponder over the verses of the Quran Wallahi if you understood the Quran you would marvel you would cry you would become so emotional because you are reading the words of Allah and remember Allah has made it a right one of the hukuk one of the rights of the Quran is that we understand the Quran, especially for a hafiz. So remember, a hafiz who's reading the Quran and he doesn't understand the Quran, imagine how much is lost in terms of the relationship between me and Allah. For example, if I'm just reading a book in another language, I don't speak that language in, as my first language, but I understand bits and pieces, but not fully. So I'm not able to enjoy or I'm not able to excel in terms of my understanding of this specific language. A person who reads the Qur'an and a person who understands the Qur'an, they are two totally different things. Wallahi, this is very important. A person who reads the Qur'an and a person who understands the Qur'an, two totally different things. When you understand the Qur'an, the khushu and the muhabba and that, that, you know, that, um, that enjoyment that comes out of your heart is amazing. And when you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, this will affect your heart even more. So I would recommend for the Hufad, read the Qur'an in English, for example. If you have one quarter to read every day for your Taraweeh portion, read that portion in English. Because when you read it in English, you will understand what you are reading in Taraweeh. And when you are reciting the words of Allah, you will become closer. You will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us glad tidings about this. So we need to understand the Qur'an. And a person who is a hafiz and who understands the Qur'an, this for me, personally, I always say this to my students, this is creme de la creme. This is the best of the best. You need to understand the Qur'an. And lastly, on tip number four, is reflect and ponder over the verses. You know, subhanAllah, sometimes we read the Qur'an, have we ever wondered, why does Allah say, Ya ayyuhanna, so many times? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention Jannah and immediately mention Jahannam? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal verses of um, punishment and then reveal verses of rewards? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention an entire surah, which is the longest surah in the Quran called Surah Baqarah, but the event of the cow or the reference made to the name of the surah is only a minimal part of that surah? Why is it that the Quran is full of rhyming. Why is it that the Quran contains rhyming uh, sequences within the Quran? These are things we should reflect and ponder and understand. Why is it that the verses of Makkah are more severe and more harsher and more aggressive than the verses that were revealed in Medina? So we need to understand this and we need to come back to this every single time inshallah. Uh, moving on inshallah, tip number six is my favorite one, Tajweed, not speed. MashaAllah, Mufti Ziyad made me laugh when I was listening to his part of the course. And he said that uh, uh, nowadays the Hufas, they compete, you know. They say, I've got a V12 engine, I've got a V8, I've got a V16 engine. SubhanAllah, some even a V32. Nowadays, people choose where to go for Taraweeh based on how fast the Hufas read. Did you know that? People choose where to read the Taraweeh prayers based on how fast or how quickly the, the, the Imams read. And this is so sad. Um, you know, Qari Ayyub Ishaq, Hafizahullah, our beloved Ustad who came to the UK last year, he mentioned a word that very that, that struck my heart. He said, nowadays the Quran is being mutilated by the Hufaz, meaning that the Hufaz don't have any regard for Tajweed. It's all about speed. I understand, especially in the UK and other countries around the world, where timing is very difficult between uh, Suhoor and Iftar. But we need to be very careful about how we recite the Quran. Remember, we will be questioned about this. And it's not up to us to read the Qur'an in such a fast way. This is not why the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an. Allah revealed the Qur'an. Allah said in Surah Muzammil, أَوْزِدْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَدِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا The Qur'an should be read in a measured tone. Not too fast and not too slow. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to read the Qur'an in such a way that it, did, it was not very fast and not very slow. And at the same time, it attracted the hearts of the Muslims. So we need to read the Quran in such a way it attracts the hearts of the Musallis. Recite in a calm, composed, and clear tone. For example, if I'm reading the Quran in a calm way, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, if I read the Quran, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin, Yakin, Abdu, Yakin, Astain. This is very fast. A person may read clearly, but remember, 
just be careful about your tone and don't read too fast. SubhanAllah, I was sent a clip last year. I think it was a country in, in Asia somewhere. The Imam recited the entire rakah in two minutes. I'm talking like one page of Quran and Surah Fatiha in two minutes. So let's, let's check our speed. Let's check our flow of recitation. And we need to have a consistent and medium paced recitation. Not too fast and not too slow. Okay. The same way when we make wudu, we don't make wudu with too much cold water and not too much hot water. We have it in between so it doesn't you know, affect us and it doesn't inconvenience us too much. And remember, we should, we should always refresh our tajweed. I remember on, on Skype, I always um, subhanAllah, read to my teachers that I studied by in Jordan, Egypt and Morocco. And even in this country as well, I read to my Ustad regularly so he can give me advice on... Sometimes we may you know, start reading a certain way or we might read a certain word differently. As we get older, our voice becomes very croaky. And we need to look after our voice. This is very, very important. So let's take care of our tajweed. And remember, it's not about speed. It's more about tajweed and how clearly we recite. Tip number six, important to us. We need to um, make sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow, to allow us. And we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us each night before taraweeh prayer commences okay so what we need to do is we need to ask Allah for help one of the best du'as to read and this is something my ustad told me over 20 years ago before you stand on the musalla one of the best du'as to read is وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ this is a dua, this is a verse in the Quran, this is to protect us from the evil eye. And it's very important that we, we need to pray this. And also the dua of Musa alayhi salam in Surah Taha, Allah makes mention of this. Qala Rabbi shurah li sadni wa yassin li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. This is also an important uh, dua to read as well. So we need to be very careful about how we correct our intention on the musalla. Also, we need to never underestimate the power of dua. I'll tell you a very, very beautiful story. And this is from my experience, subhanAllah. And I'm not making this up. Once I was leading taraweeh prayers in uh, Morocco, subhanAllah. In Morocco, I was reading taraweeh prayers. And I remember, <clears throat> I went to his masjid in Tangiers. It's called Masjid al-Suriyin. It is in Mandubia Garden in Tangiers. I was the only imam number one that was reciting the Quran in Hafs in the riwayah of Imam Hafs. The other Imams were reciting in the riwayah of Imam Marsh. Those of us that are familiar with the Quran, there are different dialects of the Quran. So one of the dialects is the Imam of Warsh, and that is quite common in Morocco. Now, as I was going to the masjid, my Ustad from Morocco, he kept on saying to me, Ishaq, when you start the Salah, don't look back. And he said this about two or three times. And I said, I looked, looked, looked at him, he goes, and he said to me, La he goes, don't be sad, don't be scared, just just keep looking in front. So I thought, okay, you know. I didn't know what he meant by this. So anyway, I went to the masala. <clears throat> it so happened that people were excited. You know, the Im an imam is here from the UK. I studied in Morocco as well, so I knew some of the locals. So the imam said to me, it's haq tafaddal, inshallah, uh, salah, iqam salah. And I started leading salah. When I finished uh, the Isha salah, I looked behind. And I made that mistake. To this day, wallahi, I always, always think to myself, if I didn't look back, maybe what happened afterwards not have happened. I looked behind me and I saw hundreds of people, if not thousands, in the courtyard. So this masjid is only accommodating about thousand people in the masjid. But outside in the courtyard, in many countries, Islamic countries around the world, they have facilities like a musalla and massive speakers. I just saw thousands of people. And wallahi, in my heart, I started feeling scared. So I was very, very nervous. And in my heart, I started beating so fast. And I thought to myself, Oh Allah, you need to help me right now because I don't know how I'm going to leave Taraweeh today. And I still remember, in my mind, the dua came to my mind when my Ustad said to me, whenever you are leading Taraweeh prayers, whether it's one person, three people standing behind you or a thousand people, always remember when you make dua to Allah, He can make anything possible. You could be leading Salah in the Haram, in Masjid Al-Aqsa, in, in, in the biggest masjid in Australia or South Africa. So what dua did I make? What dua did I make? I made the following dua. قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي one of the most effective duas to read and also the hafiz we stutter a lot especially when we make mistakes wallahi after i made this dua in my heart 
when I started Surah Fatiha, I actually had a very difficult quarter that day. I can't remember which quarter, but I know it took me four to five hours to read this quarter. And subhanAllah, in my first time in 15 years of leading Tarawih prayers, I didn't make a single mistake, alhamdulillah. I did not make a single mistake. And I became so confident that due to my, alhamdulillah, the flow of recitation, so to speak, in that specific salah, I became renowned for it in the area and people started to commend me and mashallah, it was very well received. But this is only from Allah. Remember, you could have the best voice in the world. You can have the best that read in the world. But if you do not have the dua, if you don't have the intention and Allah's help and that mentality that everything I do is from Allah. I've heard so many Qur'an say, I recite like this, I can do this, I can do that. Wallahi, it is not about what you can do on the microphone or what gift Allah has given you vocally. It is Allah that has given you that voice. Remember that. If Allah did not give you that voice, Wallahi, it is nothing, nothing in this world can take you further in terms of your success on the musalla because Allah is the one who put you on that musalla. Allah is the one who made you hafiz. Allah is the one who gave you the love of the Quran. And it's Allah is the one who instilled that love and the efficiency in your voice. So we must never forget, dua is very powerful, mashallah. So always remember the duas. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ يَعْلَمُ And قَالَ رَبِّ شُحْلِي So this is also an important dua. And again, you know, just even by saying to Allah, Oh Allah, I am about to stand on the musalla. Whatever comes out of my mouth, make it correct in terms of tajweed. And if I make a mistake, if anything gets omitted from my mouth, that is not correct, Oh Allah, please forgive me. How long did that take me? Five seconds? I'm sure we can make this intention, inshallah. And if you make this every night and we ask Allah for du'as, this is very important and this will help us a lot, inshallah. Tip number seven, Ramadan intake. Um, this is a very, very beautiful uh, advice someone gave me. Uh, someone always says to me in the UK, why is it that the Qurra and the Maulanas, they have such big bellies? But it's, also, it's mainly the ones who have the best voices are the ones who have the biggest stomachs, mashallah. It is the, the, the Qurra that have the biggest stomachs, the mashallah, that have the best voices. Now don't be fooled. I've come across Qurra who have, mashallah, Allah has given them a big body, but they recite the Qur'an effectively. Remember, it's not about how much you eat, control your intake. Wallahi, control your intake. I'm not going to lie to you. Temptations are there. We shouldn't, we shouldn't look at the plate in front of us and just eat like as if there's no tomorrow. Remember, the wisest thing for a half is to do, this is one thing that I've always taught my students, is minimize your intake. The best things to eat. Shall I tell you the best things to eat before Tarawih? I learned this in Egypt many years ago. The best things to eat at iftar time is uh, dates, prefer preferably the ajwa dates, fruit, watermelon preferably, and just a little bit, a little bit of uh, sweet that maybe honey or some sweet, you know, some sweet pastries or something. What you eat for iftar should be like a 10% intake compared to what you eat after tarawih. So save your eating for after tarawih. I've come across Hufad who have led tarawih, reading tarawih, reading Quran, and they read the Quran, for example, and there's a stop and a burp comes out. And, and then the Imam burps. And, you know, subhanAllah, this affects, you know, this affects your voice, you know. It, it creates uh, unnecessary, app, you know, uh, the ambience, the, you know, forget about putting bakhur, even the bakhur may not be able to take away that smell, subhanAllah. So let's be careful about how much we eat. Eat whatever you want, but within reason, within limit. It's all about balance. Balance your diet and don't eat too much in terms of oily foods. Try to stay away from oily foods, inshallah. Have a balanced and healthy diet, not just in Ramadan, but throughout the year. You know, I'll tell you something which I learned in Egypt. In Egypt, they are Qurra at the age of 60 and 70, and they maintain such a healthy diet. I'll give you an example. Dr. Ahmed Nuaina, who's a famous Qari from Egypt, he's approximately 70-something years old, maybe older. To this day, every day he goes for a jog, swimming, and he maintains a healthy diet. I've, mashallah, spent time with many Qurra in Egypt, and even in this country, uh, very close friends of mine who've studied in Egypt always tell me that one of the most important aspects of a qari, of a, a reciter's life is the diet. Because if we control our intake, that will affect the voice in a big way. Imagine if you're reading Quran in Taraweeh, you need stamina, your vocals need stamina. You cannot afford 
to break that stamina just because you want to eat that extra pakora or samosa or whatever it is that you eat. Just be disciplined in what you eat. In terms of drink, a lot of students of mine, a lot of Hufad ask me, um, in my experience, two things that I drink a lot is, one is black tea with no milk, with plenty of honey. I drink black tea with honey or I drink um, lemon and ginger tea. You can buy this from many grocery stores. So in the UK, we can get it from Sainsbury's, Asda. In South Africa, Australia, USA, I'm sure in the Walmarts and the Asdas and the other main grocery chains you have lemon and ginger tea or you have black tea with honey. Always have this before you go to the masjid for taraweeh and have a, a bottle with your water. But remember, never drink water that is so cold because that can affect your throat a lot. So have a lukewarm water that is not too hot and not too cold, inshallah. And that will, inshallah, you'll notice it'll have a very good um, effect in terms of your voice and the control of your voice as well. So healthy diet, nutrition, plenty of vegetables, plenty of healthy, healthy food, black tea with honey or lukewarm water at the very least. You need to have lukewarm water with you throughout your taraweeh because there are long evenings. It can become very tiring. Ideally, have your own water bottle and take this with you every day. Refill it on a daily basis, take it with you every day. You need to stay energized and you need to have that, uh, you know, you need to stay hydrated as well, inshallah. Um, tip eight, inshallah, is have a hips buddy. Establish a hips buddy for Ramadan. Many people ask me, why do we need a hips buddy? So I'll talk from my personal experience. Alhamdulillah, I have an identical twin brother who is someone who's a hafid as well. Alhamdulillah, we started on the same day and we finished our hifz on the same day as well. Alhamdulillah. So my twin brother, we started our hifz on the same day and we finished on the same day as well. Having a brother with me to do my hifz was very, very helpful because remember, you will always have the need to listen have someone listen, you will always have the need for someone to listen to your Quran on a daily basis. I can read a quarter or one juz, I would make a mistake which I may overlook. So you need someone to correct you. To this day, I have many Hufaz, mashallah, um, who listen to me on a daily and a weekly basis. And we have groups, WhatsApp groups, where we pair up Hufaz with his buddies around the world so they can help each other, alhamdulillah. So have a his buddy, this will definitely help. Um, many Hufaz utilize this tool in Ramadan. Um, because having an extra ear is very, very insightful. You can make a mistake unknowingly and that person can rectify your mistake. And it can strengthen your hips and highlight any errors. This is the main thing. You don't want to be making the same errors you're making when you're revising your Quran at home or at work. And then you go on the musallah, you make the same mistake. And then you think to yourself, subhanAllah, I didn't even know I made that mistake. Whether it's a, whether it's a tajweed rule or whether it's, uh, you know, in terms of uh, tajweed rule, whether it's tajweed rule or whether it's in terms of your memorization, whether it's in terms of your um, your voice, in terms of where to stop, the work rules, etc. You know, as I said to you, as we get older, we become weak. And as human beings, Allah has created us in such a way that we are bound to make mistakes. So have a hips buddy. If you can't, if you don't know anyone, speak to your local imam in your masjid and I'm sure they'll be able to help you or reach out to us, email us on our, or, or message us on our Facebook page and we can assist you inshallah. Um, one of the last tips I want to go over is prepare yourself mentally. This is very, very, very important. We need to prepare ourselves mentally. Uh, it is not easy. Wallahi, it is not easy. Um, to stand on the musallah each night and lead in tarawih, it is a very courageous and challenging task. If you are listening to this right now and it's your first time you're leading salah, don't be afraid. It is going to be scary, but Allah will make it easy for you, inshallah. Allah will make it easy for you. And remember, no matter how experienced you are, alhamdulillah, I've been leading taraweeh for the last, I think, 19 years now. And these feelings are always there. Wallahi, every year I stand in the musallah, the feelings are always there. Someone recently interviewed one of the imams of the Haramain, Sheikh uh, Mahir al Muaiqili, and they asked him in regards to how he feels in terms of leading taraweeh. And he said, Wallahi, to this year, every year I feel that nerve and the anxiousness. Obviously, the lead taraweeh in the haram, which is like, you can't get any scarier than that. But he said, in terms of the Quran in my heart, I always get scared of making mistakes. And that, that, this, that particular feeling of unknowing how you're going to perform that particular night, it's always going to be there. But be strong, be brave, and remember it is Allah who has put you there on the musallah. Yeah? Remember, 
Allah is the one who has put you there on the musalla. One of the reasons, uh, alhamdulillah, I am also the founder and director of National Hafaz Association UK. One of the reasons why we started this organization is to reach out to the young Hafaz who don't have that support. I, it is sad, wallahi, it is sad that Hafaz are getting turned away from masajid and they don't have no one to go to or speak to. I myself have experienced this one year, I remember, where I didn't get a Tarabi placement and I had to lead it in someone's house. And I felt so disheartened because I knew that feeling in my heart of being turned away, of being declined. And we want to reach out to as many of our as possible. But the main thing is to stay strong, to persevere. And remember, if Allah has put the Qur'an in your heart for you to memorize, Allah can easily preserve the Qur'an when you are standing on the Musalla, inshaAllah. If anything, Allah is the one and Allah is the one who can help you. And Allah is the best of all planners. He is the one that can help you in times of dire need. So don't forget the du'as are very important. We need to reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My last and final tip is tip number 10. Listen, evaluate and improve. There is no such thing as a perfect hafiz. No such thing. There is not a single hafiz on the planet on this earth who can call themselves a perfect hafiz. We all make mistakes, but we need to try and practice as much as we can because practice makes perfect. And we are human, we make mistakes, but a tip to improve your hafiz, record your daily portion of the tarabi prayers. So have your phone, and we all have a smartphone, put it on record when you start your tarawi and stop the recording when you go home, listen back to your recitation. It's a very effective tool. Wallahi, is very effective. You can listen back to your Qur'an, open the Mus'haf and listen to your recitation whilst going through the Mus'haf. You'll notice that your mistakes will come out if there are any and you can improve your recitation from there. And remember, listen back to it critically. If you get a mistake, don't, this, don't be oblivious to it. Yeah, acknowledge you've made a mistake and improve it. Okay, and there is always room for improvement. There is no such thing as a perfect qari or a perfect tajweed or perfect hiv. We all are prone to mistakes, and we all need to make dua to Allah that He keeps us uh, perseverance. And in terms of our consistency, Allah enables us to stay consistent. Jazakallah khair to everyone who has been, mashallah, tuning in. I hope you have been benefiting from the advices. Um, my name is Qari Ishaq. I'm so sorry I, I completely forgot to, offic- you know, to formally introduce myself. I am based in London in the UK. I am the founder director of National Hafaz Association UK. If anyone has any queries or questions, I will post the number on shortly. Just a quick reminder of the 10 tips. Intention, cleanliness. Practice makes perfect. Tip number four, understand the Quran. Number five, tajweed, not speed. Number six, important du'as. Number seven, Ramadan intake. Number eight, have a hips buddy. Number nine, prepare mentally. And lastly, number ten, listen, evaluate and improve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Just a quick reminder, next we have our final course instructor, the world-renowned Sheikh Suleiman Rawat from South Africa. He will be starting in the next few minutes, inshallah. After Sheikh Suleiman Rawat, we will have an important Q&A session. For Sheikh Suleiman Rawat's um, part, if there are any important questions, Sheikh will take some questions at the end of his feed, inshallah. A uh, reminder, please, as soon as this video finishes, the Sheikh Suleiman will come, become live. And then, inshallah, Sheikh Suleiman Rawat's video will be posted live on our Facebook page. So please make sure you stay tuned. Sheikh Suleiman will be speaking about social media and he'll also be speaking about the importance of being a role model and the qualities needed for a 21st, etiquettes needed for a 21st century Imam slash Hafid. Jazakallah khair, I pray that my talk or my part of the course was valuable. Please forgive me if I made any mistakes and please keep me in your du'as and my family and our organization in du'as and I hope you stay tuned. Sheikh Suleiman Rawat is next, so when this video finishes, stay on our page and the next video will start in the next few minutes, inshallah. I'll now pass it over to Sheikh Suleiman Rawat. My name is Qali Ishaq. Jazakallah khair for listening. Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.